again and think things over. Hello. So love is extravagant, love expands, and love excites. Power, this one is the person of love. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate. Which reminds us who is the paraclete? Who is the paraclete? <clears throat> is there only one paraclete? And what does paraclete mean? From the Greek word parakletos, it means to be beside, to be next to someone. The word paraclete means to be next to someone, to be right beside someone. That's the Holy Spirit, the consoler. In other words, to console. But, <clears throat> you want the old secret? The Holy Spirit is not the only paraclete, there's another one. Jesus. If you look at the Bible, the Bible says, I will ask the Father and He will give you another advocate. So that means He was an advocate Himself. Father? He Himself was a consoler. He Himself was a mediator. He Himself was an animator. I will give you another advocate. To be with you always, the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot accept. Get your Bibles, please. First, first John. John chapter 4 verse 10. What does it say? In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the expiation for our sins. <clears throat> we have a meditation I am with you always. Have you remember that? Did you remember that? I am with you always. The reason Jesus says that in the book of Matthew is because remember Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. So when the Holy Spirit is with us, it means Jesus is also with us. And God the Father is also with us. That's the beauty of God. <clears throat> Before we begin class, we invite we invite the Holy Spirit to come. Holy Spirit come, right? Holy Spirit come. When the Holy Spirit is here, the Father is here, the Son is here. It's a total package. You cannot separate them, you know that? <coughs> it's impossible to separate one person from the other two. Remember, because there's only one nature. And that's all I can say to you now. On, May, uh, on June 18, I will reveal everything to you. The whole mystery of the Most Holy Trinity, according to the teachings of the Holy Father Church. So that's the person of love. Number three, the proof of God. 
Ganz klar. Jesus says, there's no love greater than giving one's own life for a friend. There's no greater gift. I will not leave you orphans. When you see the word no in the Bible, this is what it means. Now note, it says intimate, personal. <clears throat> I can share with you experiences. I can share with you what I know. But, but nothing will equal your own personal intimate experience. Nothing. We can spend hours and, and days and weeks and years Nothing would equal your own personal, intimate experience. You have to personally and intimately experience God. That's really knowing Him. I've been talking to you about not just knowing about Him. You really have to know God. You have to know Him. And that's what it means. Intimate, personal experience of a person. divine here. <clears throat> the reason we keep the commandments is that's the fruit of our love. In other words, keeping the commandments is consequential to our love of God. It's not the cause. It's not the mover. The mover is the love of God. You follow? This is the mover. This is the result. The following keeping up the commandments Keeping the commandments is the result, is the fruit. And these are the features, the characteristics of love. Extravagant, it expands more and more. In other words, the more you love, the more you have. You have. And the more you love, the more intimate it gets, right? The more intense it gets. And it excites. And the person of love, God, loves us. And the proof of God, of the God, what greater proof is there? What greater proof? What is the best proof of God's love for us? Jesus. Hmm? Jesus. Um, I know what you said, what you're thinking. The, the, the best proof of God's love is our transformation, our conversion. In other words, if there's no conversion, there's no proof of God's love. You know the reason? Do you ever wonder how come some people are so bad? They don't, 24, one day, two days, one week, one month, without even a stray of thought about God. Do you know people? Have you seen people like that? They wake up in the morning, they, they, they sleep at night, Wake up next morning, not a stray of thought about God. Nothing. They don't even think about God. 
Not even a single thought about God. Those are the people who reject, they have their doors closed, so God will not force us. He won't force you and me. We have to open up for Him, and then He gets in. You follow? He gets in. That's why the, the best proof of God's love is our transformation, our conversion. We become different. We become new. You follow? <clears throat> Talk about St. Paul. St. Paul was a very vigilant, very energetic persecutor of the church. He wanted to kill them all. Stephen, for one, he was holding the cloak of those, stole him to death. We have to annihilate these people. This is like cancer. That's how he was. And look how he was after the conversion. The proof of God's love. The road to Damascus. Last week I was talking about the road to Emmaus. That's another profound thing. You follow? This is yesterday's gospel. 